Hello, everybody. So um, my name is Dominic Ottenbreit. I'm the uh, CEO and Director of Business Management at ESO Electronic. Um, ESO Electronic is a uh, small electronics manufacturing firm located uh, in Germany. We also have a location in Romania, uh, Greece, and the United States. And uh, what we do is uh, printed circuit board assembly. I will uh, show you what we do there. Uh, basically, this is a, a picture of a, a finished product. Um, so we buy the printed circuit board, which is the green base material that you see there. Uh, we buy all the electronic components and we assemble it. And to make that even crazier, sometimes the customer orders five pieces. So we have to buy the printed circuit board, which is specifically made for us. And then we have to buy 180 different components. And then we populate them. And of course, all of this is supposed to be affordable. So um, to give you an idea of what we do, I'll just show you a video. I think it illustrates it pretty well. So this is a log into the germ factory that we have. Uh, you can see one of those bare PCBs. It's going into uh, what's called a stencil printer. Basically, it's like printing t-shirts. Uh, you take the PCB and you print a paste onto that PCB. That's what you see. Here's the, the paste is rolling over that metal stencil. Wherever that stencil is open, the paste goes through and sticks to the PCB. Now, that, this is some of the components that you can see here. Uh, the components are put in magazines, and those magazines are then inserted into machines. The printed PCB goes out of the printer, goes into the assembly machine. This is a pick and place robot that takes all these components and with one, with one pick, it picks eight components and then shoots them onto the PCB. Some of those components are so small that you can confuse them with, uh, with the grain of dust or a piece of sand. Yeah, It's kind of hard to see, but you can see how the assembly heads are going up and down they're going to the PCB in the middle and populate it. This is how a finished product would look. This is a small prototype. They did some uh, manual uh, inspection of it. And this is how it comes out. Basically, the PCB is baked in an oven. The paste turns into tin. The tin connects with uh, the component. And then you have something like what I hold in my hand, a phone, a camera, uh, a car radio, a microphone, anything, basically. Um, so what did we do? I, I said print circuit board assembly. We have 175 active customers. Most of them are uh, in Europe. We have a couple of international uh, customers too. The furthest customer at the moment is in Brazil. I hope to visit him sometime. <laughs> um, we have 1,600 active products. So if you think about a company of 100 people, and we produce 1,600 different products. So we produce a phone, a microphone, all these different things. And uh, while we do that, we assemble roughly 30 million components every year. So why did we uh, go to ERP Next? Because we need uh, what I would call an information warehouse. Um, we have an ERP system. The ERP system uh, works. Um, however, we don't only need an ERP system, but we need to store the information about what needs to be populated, uh, what were the run times of the machines, uh, how efficient were the machines. Um, you know, all, all of this has to, has to be managed. Um, besides this, last year I was here, uh, I was the only uh, real developer, uh, if, if you would say I'm a developer dedicated to ERP Next at our company. By now we're five. Um, so um, we're dedicating heavy resources to turning ERP Next into what we call internally the information warehouse for basically everything. So I'm really excited to see um, you know implementations of of email, for example. For, for me, that's also a big part of it, you know, connecting this to, to your customer. So um, our developers uh, do software development in uh, Frappe framework. 
Python, JavaScript. We also uh, develop an ASP, Android. We have uh, a ton of desktop applications that we use for test rigs, um, for, for testing these printed circuit boards that we assemble. Uh, we also do hardware development, so we design PCBs, um, we route them, and we design uh, test rigs. So what were we looking for when we were looking into the next ERP system to replace the one that we have? Well, we wanted a heavily customizable but updatable ERP system. This is a big problem with what we have. We're using uh, Microsoft Dynamics Now Vision and the version 2009. In itself, yes, a good ERP system. Now they're Navision 2016, and 2016 has absolutely nothing to do with 2009. And basically, every customization that we did, we have to redo. And I'm not willing to dedicate the time to a closed source ERP system, dedicating time and investing more money until Microsoft decides in 2018 they have a new platform that they call something else. Um, so we are looking for a, a customizable ERP system. We're really looking for an information warehouse with an API. Uh, we will store basically everything that we can will be pumped into ERP Next. Um, we're looking for a web-based solution. We have, uh, like I said, a factory in Romania. We have a factory in Germany. Uh, so we really need uh, to be a to be able to access from access it from every place. And I don't want to deal with. Uh, setting up uh, VPN connections when I'm at a customer. I really want to pull up the information and show to the customer what we need. We needed and wanted a beautiful product, and that's what uh, I noticed first when I went to the ERP Next website uh, about one and a half years ago. Uh, it was just a beautiful product. You log in and you feel at home. You actually want to use that software. When you look at clumsy business software, a lot of it, I mean, Tally, for example, we don't have a screenshot of Tally, but oh my God, you know, that's <laughs> unbelievably ugly. And, uh, you know, people stare at that, people stare at that for eight hours of the day. And, and do they go blind? I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, you want a beautiful software that your employees want to interact with that is usable, and you want a software that your customers want to interact with. And yes, we definitely wanted an open source project. Um, until I found ERP Next, I was kind of giving up hope about that because what I saw, uh, the ERP, op the open source ERP systems that I saw were clumsy too. Um, so that's important to me because we want to develop those features, but we also want to give back what we can, what's useful for, useful to others. So yeah, here's the ERP Next logo. We found ERP Next and. Uh, very happy about it. So when I say information warehouse, what does this mean? Well, for us it means, okay, ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Software. This is what ERP Next has, and there's plenty of other uh, providers out there. I would guess that Germany has about 100, 200 ERP systems out there, the biggest one being SAP. Um, however, then we need a manufacturing execution system. Every employee at our company uh, the workers who solder, who work on the machines, they have a small tablet PC where they log their information live into the system. So we know exactly how much time did it take. If a customer calls us, we can tell them your product will be done in two and a half hours. You want to get in the car and pick it up? You know, it's not like, oh my God, uh, let me look. I have to figure it out. And two days later, you write uh, a fax. <laughs> um, yeah, customer relationship management is also important. You see... Uh, First, uh, first steps of that in ERP Next, a customer help desk, collaborative project management, very excited about that. Uh, customers, we, we deal with developers and uh, they wanna know how far is it, can we help, can we do something, is there something we can do instead of you? Uh, quality management, uh, we're under heavy quality management regulations. We produce for aviation industry, automotive industry, uh, standard industrial customers. So. We have a lot of regulations that we have to follow, and this means um, dealing with customer complaints is a very important process. What did you do to, to improve your processes, the reporting of it? Uh, work instructions, uh, workers to be able to pull up this information right away, all of this is very important. Uh, so all of this must be in our ERP system or information warehouse. Data storage and versioning. Customers send us, uh, you know, so, 
if Apple were to say, please produce the iPhone 7 prototype for us, um, they would send us data. Well, then sometime they figure out, or, or if Samsung did it, they would say, oh my god, the, the batteries explode. We need a new version of this. You know? So when they send a new version with apparently still exploding batteries, um, we need to create a new version of this in our system, and we need to keep those very cleanly separated. And we will actually do the internal versioning of what we do in Git. Um, and yes, we need a knowledge base for our customers, for our employees. If error X happens, why could this have been? If error Z happens, uh, what can I do? How should I make my designs and, and all of this? So these are a few things. I could probably list 50 other points here uh, that are important to us that we will implement at some point. That's why we have five developers. Uh, so what we love about ERP Next, a beautiful, intuitive, and easy to use design. I think that's the number one point. Uh, it's easy to set up, uh, hosted, or uh, cloud by, by Frappe, uh, and it's easy to update. Uh, it's uh, well-known technology under the hood, so it's easy to, uh, um, to get started. You know, if you know some basic JavaScript, you can do your first fixes. And uh, it's, it's just ridiculously easy to customize it uh, in the back end if you're doing sort of low-level customizations or even mid-level customizations. Uh, there's a, a beautiful API for each doc type, and whitelists make it uh, very easy to integrate other apps and services. Um, and uh, it's open source software with a great company and great people behind it. I think they deserve the applause for that. So community, um, how the question is how do you how are you planning to contribute back to the community? And uh, I've put four points here that I think I think that uh, are important. Four things in in which you can contribute. Well, number one, participate and share knowledge. Help fix the documentation. Participate in the forum. Get involved in the foundation. Come to the conference and help others on their journey with your knowledge. Um, an open source project, like Rishab said, there's always a, a question of monetizing it in the room. And people think um, that they have some, some secrets that they only know how, how to implement it. No. People will spend time. People will help each other on the forum. People will figure it out. And if you're not sharing your knowledge, you know, you'll just be left behind because maybe others who, has fig who have figured this out will not help you with your problems. Um, raise and fix issues. We're, we're all very good at raising issues, uh, a thousand issues on, on, on uh, GitHub. But yeah, maybe, maybe you can fix them. Maybe you can try fixing them. Maybe you, um, you, you know another developer who, given uh, some financial resources, would fix it for you. You know, it's not just okay. Let's raise issues. ERP next. Uh, you know, bankrolling on this project. Uh, you paying thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars for ERP software. They have to fix it. No, that's not the attitude. They're not Microsoft. They're not SAP. If you buy SAP for a million dollars, you can expect them to fix it. Yes. <laughs> But if it's an open source project, you should consider giving back and fixing stuff yourself. Um, yeah, contribute back to open source. Everything that I heard so far from uh, users implementing their own software, I need that. Everything I heard today, I need. Seriously, if you're not going to do it, we'll reprogram it and we'll make it open source. It just takes more time, you know. So I prefer if somebody else contribute it. Uh, you will be benefiting from what we will be putting out too. And again, I, I think I said it last time, you get so much for so little. And just think about that. You know, you contribute one thing and you get five things back. And uh, the fourth point, uh, contribute financially. Um, contribute financially if you host it on your own servers. Uh, think about uh, sponsoring the conference. Think about sponsoring a local conference, a local meetup. Um, you know, it's open source, but um, that doesn't mean that it's all for nothing. Um, 
contribute financially within your means and yeah try to to help create the community so that's it for me thank you very much